Hi, it's Xavier. Welcome to my Bonzo Retreat. And guess what? Spring has arrived. How do we know? Because it's cold and the snow's going to come. So what are we going to be covering in this great Think Ahead episode? Well, there's two very important takeaways that I'm going to give you. But I'm not going to tell you when they come. So you're going to have to listen all the way through. Or give up. I'm already so bored I could die. Hi, it's Xavier, and uh, seriously, uh, it is actually quite cold. All last week, we've had rain, but it's actually been quite warm. But no, we're in the uh, the first week of spring, and uh, as part of the Think Ahead series, we've got March and April to cover. So, what 13 key tasks are we going to be talking about today? Look at that. We've still got some lovely flowers on this Fuji cherry, but they're not going to be there for long, and that it's going to be one of the tasks because yes our flowering Fuji cherries and also some of our um, deflowered or defrocked uh, dwarf azaleas are now at that ripe time for um, repotting we'll be taking the flowers off for some of them that I want to get into more developmental mode we'll be doing some work on those of course we are only talking about the flowers the satsuki azaleas that are flowered these satsukis aren't going to be flowering until June, middle of June. So there'll be no thoughts of repots there. And I'm pretty sure I did this last year. This one, on the other hand, is only just starting to show some uh, purple flowers. But what's strange about this is this one didn't flower till June last year. So uh, we've definitely got some early blooms coming on this. Um, I'd imagine I'd be looking at any repot. Probably would be another month's time. Whereas this uh, dwarf azalea, it's still got the one flower on to enjoy but the rest of these are all browned and we clearly need to take the flowers off because we don't want any energy going into the next set of seed pods. Now the next thing we also need to be looking at as we're coming out of winter is how well have some of our more vulnerable plants fared and I'm talking in particular with this large silver birch. You know from last year's video that the roots on it were pretty poor and to be honest there were some issues with it. Uh, unfortunately Although this is doing very, very well and we've got buds coming out, which is on this lower branch, um, I have seen a small problem. Yeah, I was looking at this to see if there's any risks with wire, and that's one of the other things we need to watch out for, wire scarring. With the silver birch, I'll be getting all this wire off, so that's one of the other tasks I do. But the whole this side, um, when you look at it, none of the buds have popped. That immediately told me one thing, there's no juices going through there yet. Now, silver birch can sometimes fool you, and you'll find on some of the stuff that's further up the branch, you may have life. But unfortunately in this case, I fear this whole entire branch has died back. Which means, potentially we're gonna be looking at a big restyle on this silver birch later on in the year. But it's big priority, is I've gotta keep it safe. I've gotta make sure there's not too many weeds growing, there's no insects, anything else that could adversely affect the chance of this tree to recover. So, you need to check your trees, first of all, for damage and any signs of death. Not only damage, but um, I've got quite a few trees that I know overwintered with wire on them. Um, the most notable of these is the apple. Now I can already see that it's dug in, so the amount of growth it put on through the uh, mid to late autumn, even this early time, has shown that uh, clearly I didn't get the wire off quick enough. So I've got to go around now and do my final checks for wire. Again, this larch, which featured last year, loads and loads of wire on it, all of that's got to come off. While we're down here, there is another thing we want to be watching out for. Uh, certainly as we bring stuff out of the, um, the greenhouse cold frame, is things you can see here. And if you look in at the opening leaves, there's already signs of bug infestations and uh, disease. So I've got to spray this, but double check also what that could be. But definitely that looks like um, bugs are getting into there. So yeah, so we're looking for signs of leaf damage, insect infestation, the normal ones are the, uh, the black aphids, which I've actually seen all over the uh, maples already. And normally I've got some standard sort of sprays, smart bug killer or rose clear. Ultimately, I always default back to these. I know they're commercial um, and they've got a few chemicals in them, but truthfully, with the infestations I get, 
they are the most effective. I have tried the soap and water and all that sort of stuff, but truthfully, it doesn't have the uh, the kicking power to, to knock these things away. So yeah, so getting in there early, and that's despite having done loads of overwintering sprays. So gotta be vigilant this time of year, just as stuff's opening up. Definitely examine all your trees as they're coming out of the cold frame or wherever you're wintering them over. And yeah, you know that I overwintered a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm looking at my olives over here, I can see the leaves. They've definitely been attacked by a few things, looking under the leaves on here. But there's a lot of stuff that's cramped up really tight here. Lots of leaf matter, um, very wet looking soil. So I know that there's a bit of a priority to try and get these at least into somewhere where there's some bright light uh, and they're likely to get better warmth. I can also see algae and real horrible moulds on top of some of the soils of these, some of those horrible noxious weeds that always tell us too much damp in the soil. So, you know, got to do that sort of work now, start moving these things into places where they're going to get the light, where they're going to get good ventilation because we're not trying to protect them from the cold now. Well, hopefully. Now, I will certainly be doing a standalone episode all about the sponsored benches, but that brings me on to the next thing. It's still early in the uh, spring. We want to be making sure that any work we didn't get done on those benches in the autumn gets done now before we start bringing those trees out. And in fact, most of you hopefully will have already done it. Get rid of all the sort of rubbish that's been on there, if it's been leaf matter or mold or whatever. Get a new set of stains on there. Make sure everything's sturdy and it's going to take you through 2024. Because what you don't want is to have your benches collapsing beneath your trees. And if you haven't established it yet, make sure you know where your sun traps are, where the prevailing wind comes at different parts of the day. I know that my maples need to be on the benches on that side, whereas I can have the pines and stuff like that more in the centre of the garden. So make sure you've got a good feel of the prevailing conditions and climate in your garden and move your trees to the right spots. Now right now, the leaves on your, your maples and your trines are looking absolutely beautiful and this is probably the best time of the year to admire them and uh, make sure you do. Even the dogs like them. But remember, near the middle of May, you've got another big task to do. All these maples, where you've allowed the leaves to grow out, certainly in the trines, you will want to be cutting right back. Where we've allowed this to grow out, we secretly know that we actually want there's two little buds back here. All the energy is going there, but what we're actually going to do come mid-May is cut all the way back to here where we've got two horizontal buds. Or there's even these two here, but that's where I'm going to be cutting back to. And on all these branches, I'm going to be going right back. We also need to be checking the deadwood areas of trees to see how they got through the winter, making sure that there's no signs of rot in there and identifying any that we need to get some uh, preservative on quickly. Again, with the maples, there's wire here. I know full well that I've got to get that wire off. It's been on since last year and that will swell quickly once those buds go. And for many of us, we are going to have trees that we didn't get to at the optimum time for repotting. A lot of these larches I desperately want to get done by now. The buds are already opening up. Clearly we've got needle growth coming out. Certainly, um, I'm now going to wait on a lot of these before I do any pruning on them. Normally, I try to get that pruning done just as they start to turn green. Missed it. I'm just going to let it flush out, put the energy into the roots. But um, critically, can I actually do a repot on that right now, even create forests? The answer actually is yes. I've done repotting on things like this, um, certainly, certainly until the buds are flushed out properly. The needles still haven't come out fully. Um, I'd be quite happy to do repots. Would I go as hard on the roots? No, probably not. But if it was a case of just trying to get it into a, a better soil, I would have a little careful dig around. And ultimately with any of these later repots where you're outside your optimum period, the key thing to remember is some um, aftercare. So it may be that um, you want to protect it from an overly cold night or anything like that. Just watch it, put it somewhere a bit protected, don't ask too much of it, and certainly don't whack it with loads of fertilizer or anything. So in answer to can you still do repots, yes, yeah, certainly, and I've got quite a lot I'm doing. Although it's not actually the larches. I'll show you which ones I'm looking at. Yeah, oaks. And beech is certainly one of the, the last for the buds to actually start swelling out and uh, to see the green come through. I can just start seeing that there's some sign of life in these. And uh, probably in the next two to three weeks, I'll be doing the big repot on this, um, this magnificent um, oak forest. 
and you all know I got the pot because I got it from Doncaster, gosh, last year. Um, so if you want to see the pot that I got, well, go and have a look at last year's Doncaster video. There's a link up there or something in the description, but yeah, that's going to be happening. So make sure you enjoy that. And actually I've got loads and loads of oaks, which I didn't really get to last year. And amongst those, I think I'm going to have some uh, bonsai ents to select. It's going to go as part of the, uh, the, large, the last March of the Bonsai Ents project I've got on the go. And this is an example of uh, one of several little Yamadori oaks that I picked up uh, two or three years ago. Um, these have been in these little plastic tubs. They're in decent soil, but they need to come out. And as I say, I'll be repotting probably about 20 or 30 of these over the next couple of weeks. Some lovely movement in them. So yeah, so the oaks are going to get done. And the beech, well, let me talk to you about those. The, uh, the buds certainly haven't started to thicken up or swell yet, but as you know with them, certainly if you'd watched Yella's video last year, they actually elongate out as a group of six fully formed leaves. Now, I watched his video and I also watched something done by Harry Harrington, and it's all about plucking out, I think it's the, the next infant growth before it actually expands out. I've got to do a bit more research, but certainly I'm going to be doing some early um, plucking on my beach. Thankfully don't need repots, but we might be talking about an air layer. And of course that leads nicely on to the next thing. Somewhere around mid-May, once we've got through post flush hardened pruning, um, we'll be looking at considering our air layer trees. And I've had this one for many years, didn't know what to do with it. It's a Japanese maple picked up in the bargain basement for a couple of quid back in 2014. And uh, I've bent it and wiggled it. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Done all sorts with it. Bottom line is I've decided I'm probably going to try and do an air, uh, an air layer up here. So I've got a number of trees which I'm looking at air layering. And now is a perfect time to look at the tree, examine it from all angles, and draw it and try and work out whether, one, the air layer is actually viable, two, whether it's going to maximise the potential you want, or three, or whether perhaps, as in this case, I might decide wrap it in raffia and perhaps do some more extreme bending. Get your decision making early so that when we get to the right time, you know exactly what you're going to do, you know exactly where you're going to put the air layer, what angles, and you've got all the moss that you need for it. Now there is one other type of repot that we'll be looking at, probably in about three weeks time, maybe four, when I'm certain the temperatures are sitting above 14 degrees C um, through the day, and uh, probably not dipping below below that too much, down to about 10 degrees at night. Um, I normally look around mid-May, I pull all the um, tiger bark ficus out, and uh, that's when I'll completely defoliate them all, because the first thing that happens if you bring them out of the sunlight when they've been inside, is the sun hits them, the leaves say, hey no, I'm not ready for that, and brown up and crisp off. So you're gonna lose them anyway. Great time to do a full defoliation, nice hard prune, and then somewhere shady so they can get accustomed to the light and then the new leaf foliage comes out and gives you some great stuff through the summer. I'll be looking forward to getting these out because uh, during the winter time you know full well the one thing that we get on them is loads of aphids, you get all that honeydew, drips on your furniture, absolute pain, hate indoor trees. And by the way, let's have a look at the other indoors. Thankfully the jades or the um, Dwarf jades, African bush or whatever. These actually came out a couple of weeks ago. They can be quite happy in temperatures down about five degrees. And certainly I know that Kennet has shown quite happily that they can stay outside right through the winter. But I find I still get nice growth if I keep them inside. They've now been out for a week now actually thinking about it. And I'll be looking now to get some fertilizer on these. I want them to really pump up some growth. And I will let them, I will just let them go probably won't touch them until uh, mid-summer. I may take the wire off or I've tried to put some movement in there, but uh, that's coming on really nicely. Now one of the other things that's happening this year, and I've finally got around to it, is recognising that some of my enthusiasm to put some of my Yamadori stuff into pots has actually stopped them from developing those essential primary branches that are needed, one, to heal the big trunk chops I've done, and two, to take it to that stage where you can actually consider it pre-bonsai material. I've had this prunus now in this pot for two or three years. 
Um, it really hasn't done very much. The wound's healing, but again, I, I need a lot more growth in these. And if I do the same thing that I did last year, which is literally cut back to two buds, two buds, yes, I will slowly develop what it is that I want, but you know what, I want to do it quicker. So come with me and I'll show you what we're doing. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is this, which has basically just been a storage dumping group area for loads of trees that I don't know yet what to do with. I'm actually gonna change it to what it should be. It's gonna be nursery growing beds. And uh, I've already got all of these flat slate tiles. Well, they're actually gonna be dug in properly here. And things like this, which is a, uh, a linden, I'm going to be actually doing what I should have done originally. Take it out of here, put it onto the um, tile, and then put it into the ground. That way we're going to get the roots spread this way. It's going to get loads of natural energy and stuff from the ground to send shoots out. I'm going to let the shoots go out to two, three, four foot. And truthfully, I'm going to follow the advice that Yella of Growing Bonsai has been putting out in such great videos. So if you don't know of Yella, I'm sure you do then you need to skip over to his channel. Much like I hate saying that, because he's got some great content all about development of this sort of stuff. Of course, the other thing that we'd be looking at probably in the uh, earlier parts of uh, May is our pines, uh, and in particular our Scots pines, and watching all those candles starting to, to shoot out. Now, if you're still in development and you're wanting branch thickness or your healing areas, and clearly you're quite happy to let those develop out and you may get the candles shooting out nice and long um, but as we get into more refined growth which to be fair I haven't got here then I might actually be looking to pinch the candles to balance and manage the energy distribution around the whole tree so that we can try and encourage some of the weaker buds to get some energy and that will be happening in the May time and I'll go into a lot more detail about that and in fact probably go back next last year and you'll see a video that I did all about it also looking at the Mugo Pines as well. And of course, for all those of you who do regularly watch my um, channel, you'll know that I've got quite a few Trident Maple and Chinese Elm and one Fuji Cherry Roots on rock projects. These will get cleaned up. Um, I'll probably try and take a centimetre of soil off the top. And uh, having had a good look at them last year and re-secured them, I'm happy they're set up to continue their journey. I'm just gonna start taking that soil away and exposing more of the rock. And talking of making sure you check the garden properly, just notice uh, this Deodora Cedrus. I wired it up a long time ago. Now these are very, very soft barked. I've definitely got to get the wire off this before that starts sending out more shoots. And the other thing, if they're happy they're strong enough, then also I can be doing some pruning on these. But any repot work on these, I do these in the late summer, early autumn. I don't think you've seen anything like that feature in my uh, channel yet. And yes, stuff I didn't get round to, the larches. Well, I'm just gonna let them flush out. They got planted up last year, so they'll be fine. But in here, this is just one of several of my planting buckets, where when I do my pruning through the year, I'll just poke stuff in there and uh, see what we've got. And I've got a mixture of Italian alder, Chinese elm, uh, looks like trident maples, all sorts in here but some silver birches that have self-seeded so I've got a whole load of stuff and you know these are some of the later repot stuff I'm going to do it's all very very young you know strong material so it's not a problem getting it out of this stuff and setting it on its journey so again there'll be lots of cuttings and uh, and young sapling stuff that I've got to get to but yeah that was a cutting two years ago the way stuff doesn't actually need repotting like this uh, oak forest. This is Susan's Wildwood or Wildwood out west or West Wildwood and uh, it's got 20 plus trees in it. What I will do is I'll be pruning these right back probably quite quite low down in many places to uh, the new buds that I want and the reason why I can do it now they haven't swelled or opened up. If we'd started getting the buds swelling and opening then my my way of dealing with it is to leave them until it's already finished its first flush out and all that energy has gone back into the roots. Then I'll prune back hard. Now, this one is my Eliagnus or my silverberry and it's featured in two or three episodes now. It's a favorite of mine. It's an evergreen, produces incredible leaf foliage. But again, if you watched the video last year, you'll know 
that at about this time of the year I did a full defoliation and that's basically getting off last year's growth. What that does tells the tree to push out and it means that in another sort of six weeks time we'll get a much smaller newer fresher growth that will come out um, and also I'll be looking at pruning here we've got some stuff going upwards so I'll prune right back when I do that so that's something that's going to happen in the next couple of days and let's say with these olives there's there's a little bit of growth here but to be fair they haven't done as well this year in the um, cold frame so they need to get some sun we've just got the new growth coming um, they're still very very new they got repotted last year heavy root prunes I'm just gonna let this growth go this year so I'm not worried at all about any sort of directional pruning must be aware once again I've got wire on them I mean truthfully there's absolutely loads to keep you busy through the next two months and if you choose to do some pruning crack on it's not going to be a problem um, in my instance I'll prune later on once the flush has hardened off there's loads I mean this Chinese elm cascade that's got wire on it, I've got to watch out for that, that's going to go very, very quickly. We've got this other Coteniaster Cascade, that one actually hasn't even been wired up, that's just purely by clip and grow. So you don't need wire to do stuff like this. Here, evergreen, so quite happy, prune back to the stuff that you want the growth from, don't let it waste energy in places you don't want it to. So much stuff to do, but do you know there's two, two critical things that I do want to talk to you about before you leave. And the first is crucial, do keep an eye on the weather. We are prone, certainly in the UK, and I know right now in the States, to get these cold snaps suddenly drop in on us. And it's happening around the country in the next few days. Have somewhere where you can put some of those trees that are just starting to put those buds out, maybe your maples are just unfurling, certainly your tridents. Somewhere that you can just protect them for that day or two if the temperatures really plummet or drop. Thankfully, as you can see with these maples here, a lot of this stuff has come out now, so I'm going to be fairly safe. But the other big thing, and this is crucial, don't forget it. I'm waiting. Right now, all the leaves on your trees have just opened up. The buds, the leaf size is small. There's no extensions. Look at this Chinese elm, very, very fine green growth. They look beautiful. The larches, very, very fine needle cones opening, so you just get the hints of green. There's no oversized leaves. Do you know what? Enjoy your bonsai right now. This is probably, for me, the best time of the year. Sure, the busiest, but do you know what? I come out with my coffee in the morning and I really, really enjoy some of the views I get because the trees just look beautiful. So, from Xavier, living the life of luxury in his wonderful bonsai paradise, enjoying, like our young fisherman here, the beautiful leaves on this Katsura maple, or the lovely green um, needles just starting to come out of this uh, Japanese larch twin, twin pairing, twin parallel trunk pairing. Um, it's a great time, it's a fantastic time. Don't miss it. Sometimes you've just got to sit, put your work to one side and enjoy it. Because do you know what? All the work you do, you deserve to reap the reward. So, I'm sure you've got something out of this Think Ahead video that's covering April and May. Um, it's a great time, but uh, if there are any questions or anything you want to raise, then by all means, whack it in the comments. Um, if you've enjoyed this so, please, big thumbs up. And as I say, if you think anyone else could benefit from this or might just enjoy getting a glimpse of some of the stuff that's in my garden, then share it on social media. And uh, please, by all means, subscribe. Helps me, helps the algorithm. And if it helps me, then I'll continue to produce this sort of content. Of course, if you don't like this sort of content, then uh, well, don't subscribe. Shouldn't be saying that, really. Um, anyway, all the best. Happy bonsai. Enjoy spring. God bless. Cheers.